What's up guys? Another video here for you. Um, today I'm talk going to be talking about the philosophy of horror. Now, uh, it is October. It's late October and uh, we're going to be start uh, getting into Halloween. Halloween is going to be in a few days. Um, I think today's the 28th or 29th. Yeah, it's the 29th. So Halloween's going to be coming up. So I figured I'd do a kind of spooky and horror-esque uh, video, but it's still going to be out about philosophy, and I'll I'll go into that why that is. So um, I'm not really going to be getting into the uh, origins of Halloween or anything like that, like the Celtic origins or anything. Uh, mainly, I'm going to be talking about like the horror aspect. So like twenty, you know the. Um, like horror movies and, and horror fiction, uh, uh, gothic stuff like skulls and and demons and witches and why they thrill us. Now, when I was a kid, um, really young kid, I was absolutely fascinated with uh, creature features. I loved movies like Jaws and Alien and Predator and critters and all, all sorts of like stuff like that. Um, I love them. They're awesome. And uh, even when I was a kid, uh, when I was about five or six, I would ask people questions all the time. And I would be like, so um, I'm just curious, how would you like to die? And I would, I would, I would really give them options like, would you rather freeze to death? Would you uh, be encased in a tomb or eaten by a shark? Or I just came up with the craziest options because it was just such a fascinating idea for me, like how one could experience horror or and death, basically. So I guess you you wouldn't say I was death obsessed, but I was very interested in that aspect of reality even as a young kid and uh, so i'd ask people in these questions all the time and, uh you know people would giggle but uh, it carried through and in second grade i would be drawing out pictures of monsters and creatures um, eating people and there'd be lots of blood because i love blood i love the redness i love how it went everywhere. I love how it, um, still to this day, I think that blood splatter upon a white, uh, canvas or blank background is one of the most beautiful things ever. Um, something about that. I just, I loved it. But you know, when I was drawing these things in second grade, my teachers got pretty worried and they started to question like, uh, you know, he probably shouldn't be drawing these things. And uh, so they had a talk with me. I don't think there was like a parent teacher conference. I don't think it got to that point. But um, basically, my my teachers were telling me, look, um, you can't be drawing this stuff in class anymore. And so me being a very sensitive kid um, in second grade, uh, I was I was just completely compliant to it. And it just crushed my um, artistic inspiration and so from that point on you know I was just like you know what fuck it you know I I don't want I don't want to draw anymore you know because I felt like constrained to what I was able to draw because I was I didn't I didn't want to draw flowers I wanted to draw beasts I wanted to draw large creatures attacking people and the horror on their faces so I've always had that um, love for horror. Um, but, uh, later on, um, in life, um, I also found my other love, my second love, which is philosophy and, um, started getting into that and the interconnectedness of this and that. And, um, I felt a contradiction, uh, within myself, uh, about this love for horror and this love for philosophy, because it seems like most philosophical teachings teach you nonviolence and this and that and everything. Uh, abstain from uh, uh, engaging in violence and even watching horror movies 
and stuff like this. Later on, I found out that that's mostly um, stems from, you know, teachers and religious organizations that want you get, getting into the habit of abstaining from this stuff. Um, which I, I grew up in a religion too, which kept me away from, um, basically it was, um, I wasn't allowed to watch, uh, magical things, anything to do with, uh, magic, um, or, or horror in, in that respect. But, um, anyway, um, I started um, getting really into philosophy, and the major book that I got into was the Tao Te Ching, which is a book written by Lao Tzu. And, um, so I started getting really into Taoism, and one of the things I realized in Taoism was uh, one of the passages talks about uh, the yin and the yang principle, which is basically you have the outward expression aspect, and then you have the inward source aspect. 